Welcome everyone to our course on ANS Pharmacology. This topic often seems daunting at first, but keep in mind that ANS Pharmacology is purely a conceptual topic. Once you have created a framework about how our autonomic nervous system works, it's downhill from there. So follow our videos and we will show you how to master ANS Pharmacology. We have divided our course into six main lectures. In the first lecture, we will introduce you to the autonomic nervous system. In the second lecture, we will talk about neurotransmitters and receptors. In the next four lectures, we will cover the major divisions of ANS pharmacology, namely cholinergic agonist, cholinergic antagonist, adrenergic agonist and adrenergic antagonist. We might take a few more lectures to cover some miscellaneous topics. So without further ado, let us begin our discussion. The nervous system is divided into two main divisions, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord, whereas the peripheral nervous system consists of the nerves that enter and leave the central nervous system. The peripheral nervous system supplies four main type of tissues. These are the skeletal muscle, the smooth muscle, the cardiac muscle and glands. We know that skeletal muscle is in our voluntary control and the other three are involuntary. So the branch of the peripheral nervous system that supplies the skeletal muscle is called the somatic nervous system. Whereas the branch of the peripheral nervous system that supplies the other three involuntary tissues are called the autonomic nervous system. This is our today's discussion. Now let us come to the autonomic nervous system. It is divided into three main divisions. The sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system and the enteric nervous system. Let us set aside enteric nervous system and focus our discussion on the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Understanding the anatomy and physiology of these two systems is very crucial to ANS pharmacology. So we are going to go over this a few times until you have a solid understanding. Keep in mind that the peripheral nervous system is just a communication between the central nervous system and the effector organs. Now, in case of the autonomic nervous system, there are two neurons which make this communication and in between these two neurons there is a structure called the ganglia. Now what is a ganglia? A ganglia is a collection of nerve cell bodies outside the CNS. We know that a neuron has three parts. The body, the axon, and many dendrites. Now, if we have a collection of this cell body outside the CNS, it is called a ganglia. Now, in the autonomic nervous system, we have established that there are two neurons. The f in the first neuron, the first neuron, the cell body of the first neuron is located within the CNS and it projects an axon which meets with the sec cell body of the second neuron in the ganglia. Now the axon of the second neuron will go and innervate the effector organ. So this is our first neuron, this is our second neuron. The first neuron is also called preganglionic. And the second neuron is called postganglionic. Now 
now again come to the cns this is our brain and this entire structure is our spinal cord the spinal cord is divided into different segments the upper one is cervical then thoracic then lumbar then sacral now with this basic introduction let us discuss about the sympathetic and parasympathetic division separately in the sympathetic nervous system the preganglionic neurons arise from the thoracic and the lumbar segments of the spinal cord so it is called thoracolumbar outflow most of the ganglions are located close to the spinal cord in the paravertebral ganglia or sympathetic chain now since um, the ganglia are located close to the spinal cord so the preganglionic fibers are short whereas the post ganglionic fibers are very long and they innervate the effector organs one preganglionic fiber communicates with numerous post ganglionic fibers one important feature of the sympathetic nervous system is that some preganglionic fibers communicate with the adrenal medulla in the parasympathetic nervous system the preganglionic fibers arise from the cranial nucleus and the sacral segments so they are called craniosacral outflow the ganglia is located close to the effector organs as a result of which the preganglionic fiber is long and the postganglionic fiber is short unlike the sympathetic nervous system one preganglionic fiber communicates with few one or two postganglionic fiber also unlike the sympathetic system there is no communication with the adrenal medulla now let us discuss about the functions of these two systems the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system often have opposing action on different organ and systems activation of the sympathetic nervous system produces the fight or flight response this is our body's response to danger to remember this simply picture a person being chased by a lion is running for his life let us see how the sympathetic activation can save his life firstly he will need a wide vision to enable him to see clearly where he is running so his pupils will dilate his brain is working harder to make quicker decisions his muscles are working harder to enable him to run faster his heart is working harder to supply the brains and muscles with more blood blood supply from other organs like the skin gastrointestinal tract and genitourinary tract will be distributed to the heart brains and muscles since these three organs are using so much energy the oxygen and glucose in the blood itself will need to be replenished so his airways must dilate to take in more oxygen from the air and his livers must break down the stored glycogen to make glucose all of these processes are happening due to activation of the sympathetic nervous system and this will enable him to reach the peak of his abilities now let's come to the other end of the spectrum the parasympathetic nervous system is also called the rest and digest system here the pupils constrict the heart rate slows down the airways narrow and functions of vegetative system like gut and bladder increases now that we have a basic understanding of the ans let us fi finish today's lecture by talking a little about the other division of the peripheral nervous system that is the somatic nervous system we have already learned that the somatic nervous system supplies the skeletal muscles another this is one difference another difference is that 
the nerve connecting the somatic nervous system and the skeletal muscle is a single neuron there is no ganglia that's all for today's lecture stay tuned for the next one and don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to our channel also if you like you can turn on the bell icon so that you will be notified when we upload the next video thank you